we are going to begin with the Denver Nuggets. And I'm just looking at this. This list of transactions is harrowing, but we're off. Notable moves. They signed Nicole Jokic to a five-year, $270 million designated veteran extension. He has a 27-28 player option. It's worth $61.4 million at the age of 32. Jeff Green picked up his player option for $4.5 million. The Nuggets traded Jermichael Green at a 2027 first, which is top five protected through 2029, then turns into a 2029 second, for the number 30th pick in this year's draft, uh, which was Peyton Watson, and a 2023 second rounder, which is the most favorable of Washington, Miami, Dallas, and OKC, and then a 2024 second rounder, more favorable of Charlotte, Minnesota, which they then traded to Portland. They also created a traded player exception as part of that deal. They use more than half of it already. They have a little over $3.6 million remaining. They drafted Christian Brown at number 21. I actually think that he has a chance to play for this team. They acquired Contavious Caldwell-Pope and Ish Smith for Will Barton and Monte Morris. They created a $9.2 million traded player exception in the process. Process for Morris. They signed KCP to a two-year $30 million exception uh, extension. Excuse me. The final year of that extension, 24-25, is a player option. They signed Colin G um, Gillespie to, to a two-way contract. They acquired center Ishmael Kamagate at an at number 46 from Portland for a 2024 second rounder. That was the more favorable of the Charlotte, Minnesota pick that they acquired from OKC in the Jermichael Green trade. They signed Bruce Brown for the mini MLE, two years, 13.3 million. That final season is a player option. They signed DeAndre Jordan to a one-year vet minimum deal. They re-signed Vladko Chanchar to a three-year, $6.82 million deal. The final season is a team option. They signed Devon Reed to a two-year, $4 million a $4 million deal. The final season is not guaranteed. They promoted Calvin Booth uh, after Tim Connolly left for Minnesota, they signed Adonis Arms and Kellen Grady to an Exhibit 10 deal, and they also signed Jack White to a two-way contract. Their notable exits include Austin Rivers and Bryn Forbes, who both went to the Wolves, and then DeMarcus Cousins and Marcus Howard remain unsigned. Holy fucking shit. Grant, what grade did you give the Nuggets? Should, should I talk for like five seconds and make you start talking again after all that? <laughs> yeah, I need to, um, I'm like, my watch is tracking my heartbeat. I'm like in cardio mode at this point. <laughs> Uh, this is an A. Uh, I'll start with the, the arguments I think uh, I'd be willing to hear for knocking it down to an A minus. Um, losing Connolly uh, to Minnesota, you, you know, I think it was initially reported he got ownership stake or something. And, and then maybe it's like, well, I don't know. It just, if you've been critical of the Nuggets for being too cheap, for being a really good organization that's owned by a very rich owner, um, that losing Connolly to another team, potentially over money, you know, that might rub you the wrong way. And then the DeAndre Jordan signing, like, it's a one-year veteran minimum deal. I think it's a, a dumb signing, but it's like, it's not fatal. It, like you it can't kill a veteran minimum signing, like whatever they'll find, go find, well, let's talk about Hassan Whiteside again. Like, go find somebody else out there if you need a backup center for the like four minutes of playoff games that Jokic doesn't play. So uh, it's an A. Jok the Jokic extension, great, locked in, awesome. Um, I think KCP fits perfectly. I just I've seen him play in finals games on a title winner, and like I, that's kind of a reductive way to think about it. But he fits exactly, I think, what this team needs at the two. Uh, I love Bruce Brown. Um, and the defense, the, both him and KCP, the defense that they're going to get out of those two are big upgrades, I think, um, along with Aaron Gordon being back. So just the idea of this team now, if you have Murray back and you have MPJ back and you're, you know, you've got like, you've got options and th th this roster just feels like every, every addition they made made sense. So, I mean, I'm not going to go through all the, the, the smaller things like the Jermichael Green trade, fine, just to move that money off. Um, I think a lot of people like Christian Brown. I can't profess to know enough about that to, to have a real strong take on it. Plus this team is so good. I don't think he's going to be a factor at least this year. Um, I just think they got the big moves, right. G you know, extending KCP was also like, I think that's a solid move. So big moves, small moves, like theory of the team addressing needs, um, just kind of just ticked all the boxes as you go down. them. So, um, I think this is one of the best. I mean, it's an A. It's one of the best off seasons in the league to me. So we diverged from this pretty substantially. I gave them a B. Okay. Uh, and this is coming from someone who might pick the Nuggets to win the title. Like if I was forced to choose right now, <laughs> I think they had a good off season. But I, I think it's inexcusable to let Tim Connolly walk over money. I know that there's some sort of like 
equity type incentive that they gave him. But the fact that he was even in a position to leave in the first place speaks to where they've skimped on executives just in general. It feels like dating back to Masai Ujiri. Calvin Booth team is, is more than capable from what everyone around, around the league says. That's great. It's still just the optics are, are just, I, I don't know. That's uninspiring. Um, yes, they nailed the Jokic contract. They nail some of like the other move. I love the Bruce Brown signing. It might have been my favorite like free agency fit. Uh, one of them of the the off season. The KCP trade was great for them. I think the extension is absolutely fine too. But just like giving up a 2027 pick and that's a Michael Green dump. I know that they got number thirty. Peyton Watson better be really fucking good. Just because I'm not in favor of giving up a distant first round pick that's protected so far out. You've limited if you wanted to go make other mid season moves. Like you've kind of now tethered yourself to a certain level of transactions, or you have to start talking about like, well, we do, do we need to take a swing by putting Bones Highland in there? This team may be already finished. So I'm not trying to say they need to make another big trade, but that's just, I don't like trading distant first round picks uh, in to get off like an expiring contract and to get back the number 30 pick and some other second rounders. It just felt like a, that was weird. And to me, I thought it was just like incautious. Like it was, it was just a little bit reckless. And then, Yes, they nailed most of the big moves, but why are you signing DeAndre Jordan? Like, is it solely for the locker room presence? And you also, you just gave two guaranteed years to Vlatko Kanchar, and I know that he's tight with Nikola Jokic, but like, you got to do one or the other at that point because I know you have Jokic, but your front court bench rotation is still just like, I, I, their bench might be better than last season by virtue of just them being healthier and maybe having a little bit more better fitting talent. Uh, at the same time, you just look at their backup big rotation right now, and it still is sort of uninspiring. Is it Jeff Green playing a lot of small ball five? You have Zeke Naji as well. Are you actually planning on playing DeAndre Jordan? Because then that's that's absolutely terrifying. Um, so just like missing on those small moves, in addition to trading a 2027 pick in a non-blockbuster deal that didn't net you any significant assets, um, and then on top of letting Tim Connolly leave, I just don't think it was a perfect off season. And I get that some people will probably be higher. I think there might even be some people who are lower than this, but they've also, I, I believe in bones Highland, but like going from Monte Morris and bones Highland as backup guards to fucking is Smith now is in like, that's a, that's a huge downgrade. You have Bruce Brown in there too. So that's not, that didn't factor in, but I don't think this was by far and away a, a home run off season. I think they got the biggest thing, right? And that's the Nikola Jokic trade. And then Bruce Brown, signing I loved and the KCP trade while it was in effect they were dumping money it's one that addressed one of their bigger weaknesses so I'm better than okay with it I like it but to miss on some smaller moves on the margins or give up that long-term pick and then again I think Connolly leaving has to be a part of this grade as well you talked me down to an A minus because because the, <laughs> the, flat, the flat A implies like they got everything right. And I did I already listed the Connolly thing, which is not nothing. And the Jordan ro using a roster spot on DeAndre Jordan is also not nothing. So I'm going to go A minus, but I still, I still like it a little better than you. I think overall, they also did use the mini MLE when a lot of people were concerned that they wouldn't. So maybe, maybe I'll bump mine up to a B plus like later, but they, look, they had a very above average off season regardless. Uh, but yeah, so I'm going to stick with my B you went with an A minus. <laughs>